Hey everyone, how's everybody doing? And uh, today we are going to be focusing on the modeling part. Uh, this is the part two of the installment of the painting uh, making, and uh, this is called a COVID ICU, a COVID-19 painting. And previously we uh, uploaded a video on initialization as well as the block-in, and eventually the painting will look like this and uh, after modeling and we will gradually focus into the refining section now to do the modeling we will be focusing on uh, the saturation the correctness of shapes and also the textures as well as the contrast uh, in each and every element so that uh, the overall harmony is not jeopardized by any means and um, how to make it more beautiful and more accurate uh, the way i saw it in the hospital um, it is uh, my goal uh, to create a very intriguing medical painting and uh, that was uh, uh, my intention and uh, here i started with modeling and uh, thinking very hard with uh, all the shapes and details obviously you can see that uh, in the blocking process uh, there was no detail it was just uh, indication of which value uh, goes where but here uh, there are a lot of things that uh, are to be considered now i am also thinking of uh, the overall effect of lighting and shadow so that the contrast can be increased accordingly and here i am mixing a lot of colors and the colors are uh, you know titanium white uh, uh, chrome yellow hue uh, yellow ochre and uh, quin uh, quinacridone magenta burnt sienna and there are a lot of blues uh, taylor blue then uh, french ultramarine is the main workhorse in this painting and uh, you know ivory black as well as turquoise blue and prussian blue in the case of uh, you know the darker segments of the painting and here you can see that i'm also thinking about the temperatures the the warm and cool aspects of uh, you know of every object the light the effects of light and shadow uh, and the reflected light as well so here the uh, a lot of attention needs to be paid uh, in terms of uh, accuracy of the color temperature now i'm also trying to build uh, the saturation as well you can see that uh, i'm mixing some saturated ultramarine uh, and then gradually will uh, in introduce the thalo colors and uh, create more uh, you know introduce more accuracy to the shapes of each and every object now the doctor that i'm working on he was the most senior doctor and i considered him uh, while sitting on the bed that uh, he's the main uh, protagonist of this uh, theatrical piece and he is up way up front uh, compared to the others and he is going to be the in the lead role so all sorts of details are uh, needed to be considered before you know moving on to the other so i have sta started with uh, this figure and i'm very uh, concerned about uh, the way he is represented rather than uh, you know uh, making some sort of uh, compromise on shapes etc and here i'm uh, you know still painting with the warm background but uh, eventually it will become very cool and the warmth underneath will be shown uh, through the through the upper layers now in a large piece like this it's uh, important uh, you know to have some sort of an accuracy rather than uh, keeping it uh, very wishy washy kind of a way or rather i wouldn't say wishy washy but uh, you know very impressionistic way this is a large piece which everybody is going to be going to see and uh, and in the recent exhibition in the month of may it was uh, praised for its uh, attention to detail uh, by everybody in uh, new delhi so i'm quite happy the way it turned out 
and this is uh, the first of a kind for me uh, with so many people and so many equipments and so many stuff uh, and i took it as a training ground for me uh, to paint a picture like this and uh, a picture like this will deal with a lot of portraits and also uh, a lot of still lifes here so it's a com combination and as well as landscapes uh, landscape aspect uh, is also uh taken into consideration uh, which you will see in the in the refining segment the atmosphere will be taken into account uh, in the later stages at this moment uh, there is nothing there i'm just uh, dealing with uh, the main uh, person and you can see the speed of my brush it's actually very slow and thinking very hard before you know putting a brush stroke and uh, it's not just about copying a photograph it's about uh, thinking what to do and you know which would uh, what sort of uh, brush strokes and uh, you know what sort of lighting would uh, impact the painting in itself Here I am also thinking about the strokes uh, because the lighting is coming from the top and which is slightly more dramatic and uh, this is the modern lighting, industrial lighting so it's going to have its effect differently compared to the you know probably the paintings of uh, you know painting still done till 19th century and uh, here i'm focusing on the pp suits you can see the blue tones but gradually uh, you know fair deal of highlights are going to be in place and my job is to create the plastic texture and now i've started into the real modeling and this is the white paints mixed with slight amount of pv19 um, to create the whiteness uh, in the walls and the warmth will be seen through uh, because that is my intention and that is how I work I work in layers and you can see the upper upper walls are white and the lower ones are uh, slightly grayish in nature but they are colorful grays so this painting does not have too much colors except the you know the curtains but uh, the overall painting if you see it up close you will realize that there is a lot of interplay between saturation and the you know uh, the color variation and this is what I intend to my uh, painting so far hasn't been that you know colorful but whenever I uh, paint pictures they uh, have a lot of color variation and juxtaposition between uh, you know two or even three um, types of colors uh, to create the shimmering glow in it so here i'm mixing brown and uh, you know some darker colors to focus on the uh, the floor and this is a wooden floor and it is uh, going to have some reflective qualities but at this moment i'm not uh, indicating i'm just light bit maybe so this uh, pattern is uh, slightly irregular so i'm creating uh, you know variations within the f floor section to create an indication of uh, you know the light and the dark colors and uh, mid tones and uh, you know some parts are having more dark areas because it's receiving less light and some are having more light but uh, a lot of things happening here uh, with glazing and etc and the you know this brown color is almost everywhere in this painting so it was categorically chosen and these parts will have uh, a lot of equipments uh, the medical equipments that were there but uh, we are not going to focus on those at this moment we will be focusing on saturation contrast shapes and uh, color variation now here I'm playing with Thalo colors as well as French ultramarine and uh, you know blues mixed with whites as well as the Prussian blue shadows. 
you can see that i'm already indicating some highlights on top of uh, the blue mark of the pp suit and this is french ultramarine through which i'm using the you know uh, marking the shadowy shadowy areas and there are a lot of brushes that i'm also using now you can see that um, using Thelo Blue to create some amount of saturation and these are the things that are going to uh, you know uh, create some points of interest while it's placed under the gallery lights and indicating the shadows gradually with uh, Prussian Blue to make it darker and this is not black so ultramarine itself is a very dark color but uh, Prussian blue has its own uh, powers and uh, here I'm focusing you know trying to create it as uh, accurately as possible Now I'm using Prussian blue to create uh, the super contrast. It's looking like ultramarine, but uh, it's actually the Prussian blue. So the upper parts are receiving more light. The lower parts are receiving less light and the core shadow areas will have uh, the reflected light, which is indicated by uh, this uh, Thalo color. And in a painting like this, it needs constant thinking about how to proceed and how not to proceed. There are a lot of uh, trial and error and it takes a lot of time in a painting like this unless uh, heavily copied from a source. And this painting is not copied from a source. Uh, it's a, uh, like a combination of different uh, source materials and then uh, all of them put together and a lot of permutations and combinations were uh, done before uh, getting into the painting process itself and all of those are uh, you know uh, discussed uh, in the you know initialization video that was uh, uh, uploaded before this and here I'm creating the highlights etc all of these are products of my imagination and not copied from the photo itself I do not copy from the photograph I think and I you know uh, paint and sometimes uh, except for a few occasions most of the time they uh, seem pretty accurate because uh, I'm thinking very hard and here I'm I have started uh, you know modeling the other areas and this is another doctor and thinking about the reflected light again you can see the highlights placed on under the arm and also above the arm so I'm thinking about the theory as well the lighting theory and these are some of the super highlights that I'm placing but will also be introducing shadows so it's back and forth to indicate one particular shape now here are two dark colors and upper areas will have uh, you know lighter colors and I'm going to indicate them these are some of the dark colors in the blue line in the PP suit now the lighter colors will be placed you can see there is no speed a lot of people think about uh, you know uh, painting faster is about painting it very fast with hand moving uh, very fast on the canvas and the palette but it's actually not that it's actually about uh, doing less rather than doing more the reason why it took it took me so much time to finish it because it's a very depressing painting in a way to me because a lot of things happened in the family during the time and uh, that had an effect on me uh, personally so uh, you know this time hasn't been easy for most people but uh, we somehow learned to uh, you know accept it and move forward and you know focus on many things 
here i'm uh, painting the other doctor that i have and uh, again it's the same thing uh, focusing on the light areas lighter areas and also focusing on uh, the interplay between the shadows you can see he's uh, slightly uh, he has a weight in the mid section and uh, i'm you know putting most amount of highlight on top of that as well as his shoulders and and gray colors underneath will be playing the role of shadows and will gradually focus on uh, the details as well and indicating or correcting some of the uh, aspects uh, that are getting lost at this moment so the brushes you can see that uh, they're very small and uh, the daggers uh, are one of the best brushes for a painting like this and if you have uh, a lot of daggers then uh, these dagger brushes will be very useful because they have such a unique shape that they can draw fine lines they can uh, you know draw flat lines anything anything is possible there is another kind of brush that i have seen on the internet and uh, it's a flat chiseled brush but it's very long flat and that is also very useful and what i found in dagger is that the tip of the dagger brush can be used for blending uh, two uh, colors uh, the edges and creating a symmetrical appearance or illusion so uh, and also the filbert is going to be very useful i am going to be introducing filbert in a while and even uh, in this particular section of the painting but at present i am using the dagger here i'm uh, you know trying to create some definition within uh, the shapes and indicating shadows the lower parts of the torso will have uh, the shadowy areas and here is a very thin small nylon filbert and i am indicating all the lines to it so this is a very interesting brush uh, for a you know specific line this is not going to create any abstraction like a bristle uh, filbert would do but uh, you know this brush will create straight lines so i'm using that and these are for highlights and i have indicated some marks uh, you know of the pp suit and redefining the fingers with this brush and he is actually turning on the ac which was a nice uh, sort of a pose that i got and i was ready like a hawk <laughs> and uh, each and every person what was doing i captured all of those and put them together in this one and here defining the fingers and he will be holding uh, an air conditioning uh, remote which is not there will be put in later indicating the fingers and that's it and also re highlight uh, highlighting and redefining the other areas as well the other hand and creating that shadow for the palm so you have to constantly think about the light source what is your light source if you understand the light source then you will understand the connectivity of the shadows and the contrast between light and shadow and the core shadow and also the reflected light which part would reflect light onto the surfaces and here i am using turquoise blue this is the only part where i am using turquoise blue uh and this is a thalo mixed one this is not cobalt teal but uh, still it's turquoise blue and very efficient and you you can see that i am just indicating the lighter parts with pure turquoise blue and will add a little bit of uh, brown color uh the burnt sienna for the shadow areas burnt sienna mixed with turquoise so that is your shadow and uh, the light this is how i have painted in this painting and now we are moving on to the portraiture part and each and every person will have a portrait whether they are in pp suit or whether they are the patients themselves and you can see the cool marks 
the light is cool so the face in front of the face is actually highlighted by the cool marks and the you know background is warm now this is another thing this is a still life consider it as a still life this is the bed and i have to create this aluminum or steel uh, material that is there i'm not sure what it is but uh, this looks like steel so it will have the metallic vibe and there are plastic areas as well that uh, you use to pull the bed so we'll be focusing on all of that here i'm trying to create the you know shine on top of the handle over there i don't know what it is called and this is the plastic area you use to turn the bed uh, from sideways and it must look like plastic rather than you know an iron or maybe a wood this is not wood this is plastic so it must have that uh, feel so this is how you do these paintings you always think about the you know the substance that you're painting or stuff that you're painting indicating the shapes and always thinking of uh, the light and also thinking about the brush strokes if you understand the shapes you will understand how to execute and this is the highlight just a little shine on top of uh, the surface and this is another metallic object and then this handle so all of these are painted back and forth but uh, you know they must have their own feel so you have to understand how to deal with them and since they are plain they are not going to have any textures on them they will be very shiny and so if smoothness needs to be indicated i am doing that creating blended edges the lower edges that are receiving less light so if you understand the lighting you will do everything and this is the saturation that i'm introducing this is thalo and then again the darker areas and i'm going to blend them all up this needs blending you know if you're into uh, depicting things accurately then uh, you have to think about what they look like rather than unifying them uh, with one kind of a stroke so that is uh, i think is wrong and here i'm painting another object which is which is a slightly fuzzy object and this is uh, uh, a rag or rug that was given to me and uh, you know i'm indicating all the warm areas but overall it's going to have only two values mostly uh, one is the base color of it and the shadow colors and there will be some interplay between highlights and uh, interim values but overall it has only two values you can see that now and uh, i am uh, indicating all the shadow lines and gradually within the value range i will try to indicate all the other uh, you know shadowy areas you can see that i'm uh, focusing very hard on uh, the shapes as well you know i am a shape guy and uh, if the shapes are not correct then i feel very uncomfortable and uh, you know i'm blending with uh, my fingers as well as uh, you know using the tip of the dagger brushes to create uh you know the blended edges and also using filberts with one stroke to indicate the extreme shadow lines and here is some cool light that i am placing at the top because the light is cool and light is not warm and we will be mixing them with uh, the inner areas slightly so that it uh, creates the rag like appearance and it's just about uh, indicating the values and the brush strokes the way you're going to uh, do it so i'm introducing a lot of cool areas and these are just minimum you can see i'm blending them uh, within the value range 
and uh, this is how it's done it looks like a rag compared to the steely surface that you're seeing at the back and the pp suit everything is differentiated and so this is how you make things real and this is a silky surface uh, that was there in the rag i'm using all value range here uh, rather than two values it has a shiny area super shiny area shadow extreme shadow and um, you know the core shadow areas everything is uh, there in this so this is like a good example of uh, how to do values if you want to learn values then uh, paint shiny objects along with uh, non shiny objects and you will learn a lot about values and everything must uh, look rounded if something is uh, uh, something feels like that it's you know going inside uh, into the object then the obviously the value is darker and something is too uh, bright then obviously it will pop more compared to and look disjointed so this is how the values are judged and here i am painting another metallic uh, surface uh, which is uh, also shiny and i'm taking great care in uh, depicting uh, depicting that uh, as a you know metallic uh, surface and i'll be using my palette knife brushes fingers all the tools that i have for uh, this uh, section and the super highlights will be placed with the uh, you know a palette knife so this uh, part gave me some trouble and you can even see that the plastic area underneath that black line uh, has a color variation underneath portion is painted with French ultramarine and the top section which is receiving more light is painted with the saturated uh, Taylor blue so you can see how saturated it is it is receiving maximum light it will re retain some sort of a some sort of an interest and create the uh, help me to create the illusion of atmosphere when i'll be doing the backgrounds which is mostly in white and this is like uh, the most colorful area uh, of the painting and here i'm still focusing on uh, the metallic areas and using the palette knife to create the shine and now we have moved to the other area which is uh, and the painting is upside down as you can see and i'm focusing on the top part and this part is well lit because the lights are going to be uh, there but i have to create an inter uh, play between the shadowy areas and well lit areas and this part will have a lot of muted shadows and a lot of highlights and i'm using pv19 here very uh, you know uh, effectively because uh, of the warm base that we have which is like a yellow yellow and uh, pv19 is a violet color so it is going to create a good contrast and i am also creating the edgy marks you can see and this is the pv19 uh, uh, color that I'm putting along with a uh, heavy amount of uh, titanium white and for some uh, super shiny areas I'm using the palette knife with uh, straight white paint so that it reflects light this is how I create the shimmering effect the thicker paint will reflect more light on from the surface so you know you need to think about this as well and i'm using the palette knife because i need to create the effect of the flatness of the wall and the walls are of, of the hospitals are very you know neat and clean and the lights are bright so i'm doing that you can see that there is a distinction between shadow and uh, the light areas and uh, the core shadow area will be painted gradually with a mixture of uh, ultramarine and uh, you know titanium white and this is the color and the underneath warmth will be shown through to the layers and you can see that ultramarine from one side mixed with white and there is the shadow color with pv19 and uh, yellow ochre and here i'm 
painting the area with uh, titanium white so this is how you create the variation if you understand the lighting dynamics then uh, this is how you create them and you will make mistakes like this i have made a mistake but uh, i'm still trying to create something extraordinary in this part and this is how the you can see now the reflective uh, you know surfaces are shown this is highly reflective and i'm mixing uh, a lot of colors here to create that effect and this is the shadow darker area of the shadow blending them a little to create the right shape and there'll be a slight amount of highlight there yeah so that part is done now since this is a man-made object everything should be symmetrical and i'm measuring them all up this is the ceiling and i need to see that if there is any uh, you know dissimilarity and you can see that it's not symmetrical so i am uh, rectifying that and there is one thin line that uh, is there it needs to be one dark thin line very thin but it needs to be there to create the distinction between the wall and the ceiling you know some areas in that will not receive enough amount of light so i have to create that and this is what i'm trying for and this is not a ruler this is just a piece of uh, stick that i have but it works my hands are also quite straight so i'm also using that You know, I am always thinking about which part is receiving light, which part is not receiving light. There, you know, the shadows are created by the curtains as well. And here I am putting more shine with the palette knife, creating flat light. And this is where the lighting system is going to be placed. The industrial light of the hospital. Anyway, I'm uh, focusing on the wall as well. So this is a very tricky part in a way. Uh, there are too many lights. There are too many, uh, you know, shadowy areas. So it's not easy. But the f uh, dagger brushes have been very useful in this uh, for this particular section. You can see I'm always correcting this area, and further corrections will be done during the. Uh, the refining stage but at this moment this will do and this is the ultramarine part that I uh, you know introduced and now I am blending them with the tip of the dagger brush as well as my fingers everything so that it appears flat it should not appear disjointed It's very much an instinctive uh, process, just like modern art. But, uh, you know, you will not feel satisfied if something is uh, left wrong. You have to uh, think about the main object which needs to be highlighted as well. Here I'm focusing on the lighting as well. And the lights are actually flat. So I'm, uh, you know, darkening the edges of the lighting. You can see even in the photograph there that the light is the brightest area, obviously, because that is the light source and all the areas are darker than uh, the light. So that part will have the most uh, amount of white. And this is lead white. I'm using lead white mixed with some, uh, you know, blue color possibly cobalt blue this is not uh, french ultramarine so i've used cobalt blue as well and i'm going to create the reflections notice that uh, the reflections are placed just a little uh, lower you know than the main object so that it retains that edge between the main object and the reflection there is a solid line in between them and this is lead white uh, and this is almost like glazing 
and the glazes have been put and they will be modified heavily uh, gradually and this will have some blue because the person is wearing a blue plasticky thing i don't know what is that and this part is receiving light so i'm indicating that for the future area but i'm creating again a distinction between the leg and uh, the floor we are putting more marks and we'll be blending the other areas a little and this is the reflection of the curtain now i'm blending it with other areas some highlights onto the shadows especially from the tips that uh, are well lit and this is the darker area to create the distinction so you have been able to see how the bottling was done and if you like this video then please click the like button and also subscribe and uh, remember to ask for questions in the comment section and check out my website for more paintings in www.costofmfineart.com i thank you for your time take care